Hey, Andre, how's it going? Brody Miller with The Athletic. I mean, obviously, you know, you spent several years in the 3-4, and then, you know, I guess just walk us through, you know, did you feel like, you know, really like you were playing like yourself in a 3-4, and how much better of a fit is the 4-3 defensive end spot for you now? Um, the 4-3 is definitely, uh, I would say, my fit. I guess what I was used to coming out of high school, um, putting my hand in the dirt. Once I found out uh, we was moving to a 4-3, I was excited. Um, I felt like I'm back to myself as far as like high school and just getting my hands back in the dirt and doing obviously what I do best. Um, but it's, it's, it's really been great. Um, Bo's been great. Um, the, the whole transition with it is just like, it was like normal to me, uh, getting back used to it, putting my hand in the dirt, coming off the edge and stuff like that. Uh, it's been kind of normal now, so. Hey, Andre, this is uh, Glenn West, LSUSI. You know, it kind of seems like the common theme that, you know, whether it's John Trey last week or and you in your case, that, you know, just waiting your turn and, and, and having that kind of impact on a team this year. I mean, just kind of what has this, I guess, first couple games been like for you uh, now that you're kind of a full-time starter and then also just kind of you guys as a whole, as a defensive line, you know, you guys have been getting a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. Just kind of talk about, you know, the, the defensive lines play as a whole? Um, going back to what you said, like John Trey uh, said, um, just waiting your time. Um, I had guys like Arden Key coming in, um, Caleb Warren. Um, so it's just watching those guys and learning from those guys and just waiting for my opportunity, um, just like they did, waiting for my opportunity. Um, now that I have the opportunity to make the most of it, it's my senior year. Um, and then far as the, the D-line, um, I'm excited. Like. We've been doing great um, as a whole. It's like, it don't matter if you're a one, two, or whatever. It's like everybody's, it's some, if a different person's on the field, it's like the same the same thing, nothing different. Um, everybody's playing like the first teamer. Um, and it's just exciting to see. And just the, the progress we made, um, we put in a lot of time and work off season, um, staying together, making sure we coaching each other up and just staying on top of each other with everything. And just now seeing everything unfold and. Um, the production we're making as a, a unit is, is very exciting to see. Hey, Greg Brooks from The Advocate. Um, you know, how much can an attacking style defensive line get tripped up in an offense like Missouri? I mean, Jacoby kind of said it reminded him a little bit of Auburn. And how do you keep from getting stuck in and stuff? Um, I, to be honest, it's just us doing what we do best. Um, Bo's going to scheme it up, whatever uh, have you, um, and we just got to do um, our assignment, our job, um, get to the quarterback, uh, um, just basically just do what we need to do, do our jobs, and just, you know, make plays um, when need within the scheme and stuff like that, so. Hey, Andre, it's Amos from uh, WWL in New Orleans. Uh, quick question. What one your pregame outfits, are you still, now that you're playing a lot more, are you still putting as much effort into that area? I don't know. Uh, I um, The first game I came out with, uh, I think it was, I forgot what it, oh, kind of like a little old suit I had. Um, I haven't been really, not so much into it like that. Because I felt, to be honest, I thought the first the first game coming down Tiger, I'm like, it's not about to be nobody out there. So it's like, I'm not about to spend all this money on these suits, jackets, and nobody not about to be out there. So um, obviously there's people out there. So I don't know. I might stay up to it. I might not. I don't know. I'm still really thinking about it, um, if I should or shouldn't. Because um, I know like the away game uh, we went to, um, this past week, I just wore like a regular suit jacket. So um, I don't know. I'm still thinking what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I, I guess just you know, obviously we knew that was something you did the last few years. But what else did you do, kind of you know, to make yourself you know kind of stand out on the team, even when you weren't really playing as much as I think you'd like to have? Um, just being a, a teammate, being a teammate, being a brother, just being there for everybody, um, regardless if I was playing or not. If you weren't playing or not, like I said. I knew my opportunity was coming. Whenever it came, I just had to make the most of it. Um, but just being there, being everybody's hype man, being there for everybody on the team, whether it's offense, defense, um, just, just being a, just a great teammate. That's all, really, to be honest. Hey, Andre, Michael Cobble, uh, 
WBRZ TV here in Baton Rouge. Good to, good to talk to you. When we were back at practices over the last couple of years, to me, it seemed like Coach O was riding you the hardest. Uh, how, how challenging is that to have the head coach be your position coach? But on the plus side, you have to know he cares about you if he's going to put that much effort into you. And do you feel like it paid off? I, to be honest, I definitely feel like uh, it paid, uh, paid off. Me and Coach O talk a lot, and he tells me all the time I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you, like, becoming a leader. Um, I never, like, gave up. You know, a lot of guys could have did this and that. I could have did this and that. Um, but I start, decided to, you know, stick it out. Um, and like I said, just wait my opportunity. And now that I got the opportunity and I'm making the most of it, um, and, like, the, the coaching he's been putting me through, he never, you know, put me on a back burner or anything like that. He always motivated me. Look, your time is coming. Your time is coming. Just make sure you're ready. And just hearing, like, now him uh, still on me, like, it's not nothing changed just because I'm a starter or whatever like that. He's still on me um, every day, making sure I, I don't get complacent, um, that I stay consistent. And, um, and like I said, just the, the main thing, him telling me, you know, because I've been here for a long time. He recruited me, um, too, and just to him, like, he proud of me, everything, you know, fought, fighting through adversity, everything that I've been through with injuries, um, coming back, you know, um, like I said, playing behind guys like Caleb One and Arden and stuff like that, just telling like now that he's proud of me for, you know, sticking it out and, and doing what I needed to do. And now I'm in the place that I'm in the position I am in today. So. Hey, Dre, Jay Rose, retiredetails.com. Um, you already know I support the, the game day suit, even if it's just for the glam or whatever it, it needs to be for. But um, we talked some prior about this year and, and what it meant to you and you, you alluded to it some there everything you've been through after the journey to get here how meaningful is this opportunity for you and I mean your family and people around you just how exciting are these Saturdays now man it's truly a blessing truly a blessing um and just looking back um thinking of game one um and even kind of game two just just Doing pregame, just thinking about everything that I've I've been through, like I said, with coming in and not being able to play, and then coming back, uh, first first game, I think it was BYU week, um, you know, starting and injury comes, and I'm out for a full season, and then coming back, and it's it's just, and then getting back in the shake of everything, and it's just like I've been through a lot, and like I said, just overcoming that adversity. And me not giving up on myself, not giving up on football. My family always, you know, keeping me intact and keeping me motivated. Um, that, you know, pray it up and just know, like, my time is coming. I never know when it's going to come. Uh, I didn't know when it was coming, but I knew it was coming. And just make sure I stay prepared. And, and that prepared me for this moment now that I got the opportunity to go out there and do what I need to do. It's my senior year, so... Um, I just like stuff like that keeps that that chip on my shoulder and keep me motivated. Just everything that I've been to and all that uh, adversity that I came uh, through. Hey Andre, this is uh, Josh Sibley with Louisiana Gridiron Football. Just kind of touch on that. You know, you, Chris, John Che, um, even Miles have all kind of waited your turn. Um, is that? Did you guys kind of ha have you guys kind of bonded over that? Just just waiting your turn. Is that some? Is that like a? Even with this locker room, is that kind of like a, uh, is that kind of like a, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, a, a brotherhood inside the locker room? Like you guys just waiting your turn? Um, it's it's just mainly, um, like I said, you, you a, a lot of guys, a lot of great players come through LSU. A lot of great players. So um, we even tell like the young guys, you never know when your opportunity is going to come. Someone can get hurt. Someone might, you know, opt out. Like class situation. Uh, you know, you just you just never know your opportunity. You just never know, um, and just even with the young guys, we tell them, you know, don't get down on yourself if you might not be playing as much, or uh, you know, you, you're young, or uh, you know, stuff like that. It's just it's not so much of a a locker room thing. It's just us keeping us each other motivated and just watching like guys like John Trey, guys like Chris Curry, who's who've been behind other guys and who had to wait their turn, and now they got the opportunity to do what they're doing now. It's just exciting to see, like, John Trey making plays, Chris Curry, Miles Bennett. Like I said, we all come from different situations, but just to watch everybody actually now actually get the opportunity and do what they're doing now is just exciting to see. Hey, Andre, Wilson Alexander from The Advocate. Uh, 
play, I'll play Missouri for the first time since Edward Geron's first game as interim head coach was the last time that y'all played Missouri. If I'm not mistaken, you were a redshirt freshman at the time. What do you remember most about Ed's first week as interim coach? Um, to be honest, I can't remember. I really don't remember nothing, to be honest with you. I can't remember. We'll wrap up with Brooks. Um, you know, we got to see a little bit of the new third down package that you're in. Um, I mean, what, how, how similar is it to ones of, of defenses past? And I mean, kind of another question too. So you flipped the number to three. Was, was there any significance to that? And, uh, um, with the, the the whole package thing, um, I love it. Um, to be honest, I actually love outside and inside. But I love playing inside. I'm have more freedom to do a lot more inside for us like pass rushing and stuff like that. Um, I love like playing three technique a lot on pass rush third down. I don't have no problem with it at all. Even if I have to get in the two technique, uh, head up nose and pass rush, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. Um, or even on the edge, I actually love it. Um, and just to just to show my you know my um, different you know positions I could play um, and stuff like that. But I love playing inside, especially on third downs too. Um, like I said, it just gave me a variety of stuff I can do with guys who might can't move as well on the inside than outside. Um, and then, obviously, playing on the edge, too. Um, so just to give that little mix-up. Um, and then the whole three situation, just something new. Something new, the start of something new. Um, I was like, why not go for it? I've been thinking about it for a while. Just like, why not now? Um, so. No problem.